Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining me this evening as we uh, spend a little time together studying. And if you will, get your Bible and turn with me to the book of 1 John. 1 John chapter 1. I'm going to spend the next couple of weeks um, looking at uh, something I'm going to call the jewels of 1 John. I, I love, um, well, all three of the epistles, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. For, uh, for the size, they are... Uh, just full of uh, good teaching. And so I, I want to take and just share with you some of the things that, uh, that John writes about here that uh, are uh, uh, an encouragement, uh, some of the, again, just the jewels, the, just some of the things that really uh, stand out uh, for, in this text. I'm going to look uh, to begin with at uh, the first chapter, uh, just the first couple of verses uh, in uh, the first chapter here, uh, and we're going to talk about the jewel of joy. Uh, joy is one of those things, it's uh, the, one of the gifts of the Spirit, one of the fruits of the Spirit uh, that, um, that should denote uh, a believer. Uh, and again, joy is different than, uh, than happiness. Um, happy uh, comes from the outside. Uh, you are happy because of what's being done around you or for you or to you, with you, uh, something on the outside. Joy is internal. Uh, joy comes from the inside. Uh, it's something that can't be given or taken away uh, from by uh, this world. Uh, and so we're going to talk about a little bit about uh, the jewel uh, of joy. So I hope you found your place uh, there in First John, First uh, John chapter one, and I want to look at uh, this first verse. And he says there that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled um, of the word of life. Our first element of joy here. Where does joy uh, in the believer's life come from? Where do we find joy uh, in this life? Uh, well, he tells us there uh, in that passage when he says, uh, we've had this from the beginning, that thing that we've uh, seen with our eyes and looked upon and handled, uh, the word of life, um, the very word, uh, the word was made flesh. We have the word of God uh, to bring us uh, joy, uh, joy that is internal. Uh, I think of the of the numerous stories uh, that I have heard uh, over or read over the years of uh, those who. Uh, have been taken captive, uh, maybe in a, a military uh, situation or some other uh, form, uh, have been taking, uh, taken into captivity, uh, held against their will, uh, deprived of, uh, of most every, uh, the, the, the good things of life. Um, and, uh, but the, and the, the only thing that they had uh, was the Word of God that they memorized, that they had uh, in their heart. And I've, I've read and, and heard numerous uh, people in that situation talk about the joy, uh, the peace uh, that they found in recalling and remembering uh, the Word of God. Uh, and so there's a great lesson there uh, for us in, in that statement, in this verse, uh, and that is, uh, the importance uh, of finding our joy uh, in the Word of God. And the reason that matters so much, I think, is, again, I said happiness was uh, caused by things that happened to you or for you or around you. Um, well, those circumstances change. Uh, if you're happy uh, because you have $1,000, um, well, you and I both know that by dark, you may not have that $1,000 anymore. Uh, if you're happy because you have have your health uh, in a moment that health could be taken from you if you're happy uh, because of family or a job uh, in in a moment those could be gone and then that happiness is gone um, or you could be happy at work today you could have a job you love today and be happy go in tomorrow 
and the company's been sold or you've got a new manager uh, and the circumstances have completely changed. Then what happens to your happiness? Well, the beauty of finding our joy uh, in Scripture is that, that it is true uh, and that it is eternal. Uh, the other issue with happiness is not only uh, could it be changed, but we could find out uh, that the thing that uh, we were so happy about wasn't true. Uh, you could, uh, I've, I've seen a couple little videos you can, and this is not nice, but you can buy uh, fake lottery tickets um, that a uh, person scratches off, and when they scratch it off, it says they're a winner. Uh, and then when they look on how to claim the prize, it tells them they have to go to Santa Claus uh, in the North Pole or something. And I've seen those videos and somebody will scratch that off and they think they've won this big prize and they're jumping up and down and they're thrilled to death and they're just crying and laughing and then they get to looking at it closer and realize uh, that someone's planning a joke on them, and in an instant, uh, their attitude has changed. Why? Because it wasn't true. Well, John says our joy in the Word of God comes uh, because we know it's true, uh, because we know it's eternal, uh, and so we find our joy uh, in His Word. So that's why uh, we, we talk so often how important it is for believers to read the Word of God, to study the Word Word of God, and most importantly, to uh, to commit as much of it as possible uh, into memory. Uh, I realize everybody's different, and some people can remember uh, better than others, memorize more than others, but as much as possible uh, to commit it to memory so that uh, if, if everything else is gone, uh, we have the Word of God, the joy of Scripture uh, to hang on to and to rely on, uh, to trust in. But not only the joy of Scripture, but he also says something that uh, for some people may be uh, a little bit uh, confusing uh, or a little bit hard to, to swallow. Uh, in verse 2, he says, For the life was manifest, and we have seen it, and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. Those couple little words right there in the middle of verse 2. I think of the second element uh, of a believer's joy, not only the joy of Scripture, but the joy of service. John says we bear witness. We tell others uh, about Jesus Christ. Uh, that is, uh, or certainly should be, I think, uh, the place where believers find their greatest joy is in serving their Lord and Savior, in, in working for their Lord and Savior in whatever way uh, he has called us to, to bear witness uh, to him. Uh, that may mean... Uh, there's, again, all kinds of ways. That may mean um, out knocking on doors. That may mean just simply telling somebody about him at the grocery store, uh, singing in the choir, teaching a Sunday school class, working with the children. Uh, but that in some way, John says, I get a great joy uh, from bearing witness, from telling others and serving uh, my Lord, serving my Savior uh, brings great joy joy. Um, to be quite honest, if uh, you are someone who when it comes uh, time to say, I, it's time to go to church, uh, it's time to, uh, here's an opportunity to tell somebody about the Lord, and for you that is a burden. Uh, for you that is uh, troublesome. Um, I, I would give my my. I would spend some serious time talking to the Lord about our relationship. Um, you, you you take a uh, a young couple that's just married, um, and that groom can't wait to tell you about his new bride. Can't wait to tell you, show you a picture of his uh, of his new wife. Um, a, a child of God that doesn't find joy in bearing witness to Jesus Christ in service, um, something seems amiss. Uh, something doesn't seem quite right uh, about that statement. So John says we have the joy of Scripture. We have the joy uh, of service. And then look in the third verse. 
He says there, that which you have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that we also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. And so the third element here of the believer's joy is not only in Scripture and in service, uh, but in supplication, uh, in spending time uh, with the Lord. Uh, I'll, I'll use uh, the marriage illustra illustration again. Uh, you have a man uh, or woman who tells me, uh, I love my spouse, I love my husband, or I love my wife, but I don't want to be around them. I don't want to talk to them. Um, then I think you would agree that something is uh, something is a little off about that relationship. Um, a child of God should find great joy in fellowship uh, with the Father, as John describes it here, and spending time uh, talking to the Lord, spending time uh, with Him and uh, communicating with him. Uh, and so uh, our third element of joy is found in that time we get to spend uh, with the Lord. Uh, and then as well in that same verse, uh, to take that even further, uh, he says, and with his son Jesus Christ, uh, our joy is in the Savior. The fact that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, uh, came to this earth and died for our sins uh, to pay our price, to buy our soul, to pay uh, the eternal price for our sin, that we might have uh, eternal life with the Father, um, that should bring you, uh, that should bring a child of God a great deal of joy. Uh, that should bring a child of God uh, a great deal uh, of joy, again, that this world uh, cannot take away, that this world uh, cannot uh, remove. Uh, and that leads us then, uh, and I'm, I'm going to skip over a little bit of the text here and just skip down uh, to what he says in verse 9. He says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, the, the final piece here of our joy uh, is found in our salvation. And we've touched on that in all these other things uh, in talking about uh, this joy uh, that comes from, uh, from above. Uh, comes from God, comes from inside. Uh, again, it's not something the world uh, gives us, and it's not something the world can't take away. Paul gives that lengthy list. He says, what can separate me from the love of God? Not death, not peril, not sickness, not, you know, he, he just makes this lengthy list that says none of these things can separate me uh, from, uh, from my God. And so today, um, whatever we face, whatever we come against, these are things, again, if you think about that list, that scripture, uh, if you've got that in your heart, nothing in this world can take that from you. Service. No one can stop you from bearing witness uh, to the Lord. Uh, the, the supplication. You take my mouth shut, you can forbid me from speaking, uh, but my soul can bear witness. I can still uh, talk to uh, my Lord, my Savior. Nothing in this world can take that away. My salvation, nothing can take that away uh, from me. No, no uh, amount of, um, uh, of bad circumstances or bad uh, situations. Or, there's nothing uh, that can take this joy from me uh, because it comes from internal. Again, it comes from the inside. Uh, it's what God has placed there through his word, through uh, our relationship, through talking with him, uh, through my Savior, through uh, enjoying my salvation. Uh, and so tonight, uh, I hope you know that joy. Uh, I hope you'll learn to focus on that joy uh, because, uh, again, so often uh, we get a little sidetracked and we begin to focus uh, on the wrong things. We begin to focus on the things that would uh, take our happiness from us. Uh, 
Um, and instead of focusing on the things uh, that God has given us uh, that bring us uh, great joy, uh, his word, his salvation, his son, uh, that bring us joy, uh, that bring us that inner peace, that peace that passes all understanding, uh, is what he uh, describes it as. And so uh, tonight I hope that is a, a word that uh, will encourage and challenge you today to not allow uh, this world uh, to, to, to hinder your joy, uh, this world to get in the way uh, of your joy. Uh, it is a gift of God that he has given us that no man uh, can take from us. And so uh, have joy uh, in your heart, in your life, in your salvation uh, for what he has done and not allow this world and its situation to overwhelm you. All right, hope that encourages you and, and helps you along the road uh, of experiencing and in, enjoying uh, the joy that God means for his people to have. Have a great evening. We'll see you back here next week.